Hello everyone, my name's Lost and today we are going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be speaking about logical thinking and how vital it is to the process of game development or programming in general actually. Uh, this is a problem I see a lot of newbies making where they, um, they think about this really cool idea and then they really struggle to implement it because they're thinking about the entire goal rather than breaking it down into small chunks and like little small steps. So today we're going to talk about that and I'm going to show you the process I use to do that. So this episode is going to be about creating um, ju just a little project whereby you have a couple of characters and they follow each other and you can sl select which one you want to be and which one you want to move. Um, and I'm just going to show you the, the logical thinking that you do for this. So we're going to create two sprites. We're going to have a sprite car one. I'm just going to make these 32 by 32. And you can just colour it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. And I'm just going to speed up and I'm going to do the exact same for the second one. And there we go. Now we need to create two objects, object car1 and object car2. And there we go, there's both of our objects. We also need a parent car. And you'll see why in a moment. So you're going to link them both to the parent car. This will aid us in um, in selecting the characters. Also, just set the sprites um, to the corresponding ones. And obviously the parent needs to be the same on car 2. So next up, you need a create event. Uh, these are just going to be some variables that are going to be used to for movement and which one we're controlling and things like that. So we're going to need control. So when control equals 2, we're going to decide that when control equals 2, that this character is not selected. Okay. When it's when it equals 1, that's when you select it. End X is going to be where we, the finishing X point in the room where our character ends up when moving. Same with end Y, but obviously on the Y axis instead. And moving, is, we'll start it to false, but when we move, obviously we're going to set that to true. Now we'll create the step event. Now this is where the main code is. And this is going to, we're just going to call this control. So what I'm thinking here is, how on earth am I going to get the characters to move where I want? So we have to imagine control is 1 and we're, we're controlling this character. How on earth am I going to move the character? That's the first thing I'm thinking. So this is how I go about it. First, we say if control is 1, so if we're in control of the character, then, we're going to, yeah, human control. And we're going to say if mouse check button pressed so if we press the right mouse button this is when we're going to move or we're going to set the direction to move in we're going to say end x if i can type is mouse x and end y is mouse y so these are the coordinates we are going to move to that's the first thing we need to do we we have to recognize that first we need to set um the coordinates of where we need to be. This is the first step of sort of this logical thinking I'm, I'm trying to get you to understand because I, you, you don't go into this thinking right how are we going to move and then sort of have no idea. You have to break it down into steps. So first you need to get the coordinates of where you want to move to. And obviously we're going to say moving equals true at this point and this is when we'll start moving. So then you have to say okay then so if uh, remember this is still in if control is one so if we're still controlled then if moving is true, then we're going to start moving. And we're going to use MP potential step. And we're going to move to the index, end Y, at a speed of 5. And we're going to check all. Now this means that a game maker will do its best to try and dodge and avoid other objects. So in theory, our, our two characters should never intersect. They should never be in each other. And now we need to check. Now I'm thinking, right, okay, so I've got us moving, but how do I get us to stop moving, right? You know, how, how am I going to deal with that? So the way we do that is like this. We say x, oh, sorry, if x equals end x, and y equals end y, then this pretty much means we have stopped, right? We're at the end point we needed to be, so let's say moving now equals false. So we're done with that code because we stopped. And we're going to have one more fail safe to check if we've stopped moving. So we'll say else if 
x equals x previous and y equals y previous, then we'll say moving equals false. Now x previous and y previous, what they mean is, or what, what they do is, they take the last position you was at, and GameMaker does this automatically, you don't have to do anything, it takes the last x and y that the character is at and it just stores them. So then you know if x is x previous and y is y previous, you're no longer moving. So we can set it to false. Either that probably means that you, you're either stuck or you know something else. It just means you're not moving anymore in this context. Right, so now we need to set up if control is 2 or anything else, that's why we're just saying else. Then we need to think about how the AI is going to behave. Um, and obviously what we want is we just want the AI control character to just follow us and this is also the code block where we will um, decide how we uh, select a character. So we're just going to say if mouse check pressed or button press sorry is the left mouse button and if instance position, so if the mouse X and the mouse Y, so the, basically if the mouse is over a parent character, parent car, then this is what will happen. So then we say, and we're going to, so we say if global play control does not equal no one, now we're going to create this variable in a moment. We're going to create this variable in a new object. And the reason we're doing that is, is so that global play control will be the player that we select. So we're saying global player control dot control equals two. And the reason we do that is because we're saying if global dot player control is not no one, then when we click that person, or when we click a different person, sorry, the global dot player control we haven't set who's going to be that yet, but once we do, when we click someone new, global.playcontrol.control dot control will equal two. So that just that just takes control of uh, the instances variable control and sets it to two. That's what we're aiming for here. So let's just create. So we're going to say we're going to create object global, and we're going to have a create event in here. This is going to be for variables. And we're just going to have global dot control equals no. Except I actually changed this to play control. I think let's just check. Yeah, there we are. So global dot play control. So now I'm thinking right. Okay. We need to set global play control to the instance that we click. Remember, the, when I say instance, I'm just talking about the object that we click. But of course, the reason you use the word instance is because you, if you have, like, let's say, five of the same object in the same room, um, an instance is one of those. Okay. So if instance position mouse X. Oh, sorry. So the global dot play control is now the instance, the par player over the mouse's X and Y position. That's all that does, that, that's what that means. So the player, that, the, the power character that's under the mouse is now the global.player control. And then we need to say global.player control dot control equals one because we've just set it to that. Now I make a mistake here. I put control equals two. You don't need to do that. And in fact, and in fact that, actually, that actually breaks it a little bit. So don't write control two. That was my mistake. Um, even people who have been using GameMaker for a long time still make mistakes. It's absolutely fine. You have to you have to just not be disheartened when you make mistakes, or if you feel like you can't learn it, you just have to break it down into small steps. It's so so important that you do this. Anyway, so now we're going to say um, if instance exists, global control. So if if that character exists, then we'll We'll set the AI control character to follow him. So if distance to object, global play control 
is bigger than 25, then we're just going to say MP potential step, and then we'll global dot player control dot x. So that'll just grab his x and the y position, and we'll move at a speed of 4.5. So it's slightly slower than the character we're moving, and we'll still check all so that it'll try to dodge the various objects. So now what we need to do is I want because if you think about it we need this exact same code in object character 2 as well. But of course we don't really want to do that. We don't want to do that because then we're writing the exact same code twice. So what we're going to do now is because we'll finish the code we're going to create a script. And the reason I'm creating a script is because we, we're using this code more than once therefore there's no point right now twice. So we'll put it in a script. So we're just going to call this script script player control and just paste that in there. That's perfect. And now if you go back to object character one all you have to do in here is call the script. Just like that. And now in object character 2, we need to do the same thing. We're just going to call the script, but we also need to put in the variables, which I forgot to do. So you can just go ahead and copy and paste those and put them in a create event in here as well. And now we're just going to put everything in the room, starting with uh, object global. And the reason we're putting object global in first is because we know in both object character one and two, we're checking um, who global dot player control is. And we can only do that if object global exists because that's where the variable is. So therefore, in this in this scenario, we need to create object global first. And then it doesn't matter after that. You can just pop them both in. Now you could put multiple of these in if you wanted to but we're just having one. And in fact we didn't even need to create two different objects for this. We could have just used object character one and put the code in there and created multiple of those but I, just, I wanted to do it like this just to show you guys. I thought it made for a better demonstration. Anyway yeah so my code here doesn't work. If you remember when I was saying the control t equals two thing I needed to remove it. This is what happens if you don't remove that. So I've selected him and everything's working and that's fine. Oh, but now look, I've just clicked him and it's not working. That's because when we click the first time, we're instantly setting his control to zero, which is uh, to, to two, sorry, which means he's not controlled anymore. Obviously that's a mistake. Um, and that's why you then have to click it twice to get him to, to get him selected. Uh, so yeah. So yeah, there we go, back in here, and now we just have to remove this line, and it all works perfectly. And there we go, now it works, and this is how you then... Have, this is why it's so important to think logically about the problems you're facing. Uh, but yeah, I hope you found this helpful, guys. Uh, if you want me to do anything else out of this, please feel free to let me know. Obviously, this was just for, for the sort of beginners and how to you know, sort of process things and think a little bit differently. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hey, guys, Lost here. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new and want more content like this. And please give me your thoughts down below in the comments. Catch you guys later.